What's up y'all? Back with a new DIY build. This is going to be a 40 gallon aquarium that I am going to use and it's going to fit uh, in the last spot in my rack. Um, as you remember, the last one that I did uh, was a woodland setting and uh, it was moss and ferns and a lot of wood and things like that. It was really cool. Uh, what I did is I actually have three sli northern slimy salamanders that inhabit that. Uh, had them for about, since I, you know, around a month after I built that. So it's been several months now. Uh, they're doing great. Um, and everything's really been growing out. I'll do an update video on that. Um, it's hard to get them uh, on film because I have to go, you know, do it at night when they're out. Um, but anyways, uh, really cool. Uh, but anyways, I have an open spot right next to that. And so what I'm going to do is be doing another, uh, I guess, similar uh, lungless salamander species. Um, I have one in mind. I'm not sure 100% yet, uh, but it's something I've really wanted for a long time. Not sure if anybody breeds it. Um, I haven't heard of anyone who does, but they're very common, so not uh, a big issue or anything like that, and it's legal to own them where I live. A um, uh, cool thing is that I actually bought a property in the mountains, which is in the Appalachian Mountains, and so uh, has a lot of land. I have a creek on my property, lots of rocks, moss. I mean, you name it. Uh, it's, it's huge. And so really lucky to have that now, uh, about three hour drive from where I live. So I've been spending a lot of time up there getting ideas. Uh, before I get into the build, I'll actually show you uh, a clip um, here shortly uh, of some of the ideas I'm getting and some of the things I'm seeing. Um, so I can kind of show you uh, the stuff that I'm experiencing and what I kind of want to build and kind of, you know, how I want to be creative and use different pieces and ideas from each one of these um, these habitats that I find when I go out in the uh, wilderness. So anyways, I think this is going to be a really cool one. I haven't decided if I'm going to do water or not. It's going to be a game time decision. I kind of want to have a creek, but it is such a pain having water. I think I'm not going to do water in this one. Um, I have a lot of drip walls, so, uh, and it is a lot of maintenance to clean those filters and get rid of algae and all this stuff. And yeah. So anyways, I think I'm going to do a uh, woodland setting uh, again, but um, I have a really cool, some cool pieces of driftwood and stuff that I'll show you soon. But um, anyway, sorry it's been a while, and I really appreciate you all watching the video. Uh, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, like, comment. If I don't uh, respond, it's because I'm just slammed at work or whatever, and um, I will eventually get back to you, and I apologize for any delays. Um, I really appreciate all the comments I get and the criticism, well, the constructive criticism. Um, I'm trying to upgrade the video equipment and stuff. I know people are like, hey, fix the audio, fix this. I actually do have a microphone, believe it or not, but I think it kind of sucks, so I might have to invest in one that's like right here. Uh, so you can hear me a little bit better. Um, also need to get some new video and editing software. But um, but anyways, uh, let's get started on this build. And I'm going to start somewhere where I don't normally start, which is the lid. A lot of people have been asking me how I make the lid. So I'm going to start by telling you how I make good lungless salamander proof lids. Um, and uh, before that, though, let me show you some of these uh, really cool um, habitats that I have that are giving me the, um, the creativity to create this next thing. So this first scene here is a mossy embankment literally right next to my house up in the mountains that I was telling you about and um, a lot of really lush moss, rocks, roots, there's even some lichen growing, really great thing, uh, you know, habitat. It's really giving me some great ideas. Um, and then this other scene here is a little further down the mountain and uh, it's a, an eroded uh, tree trunk with roots coming down, stack shale, moss everywhere. Great looking habitat for salamanders, uh, particularly like a green salamander or something like that. But let's talk about the lids. That's something that people ask about. I guess, you know, people have a lot of questions on how I create lids. You can create lids out of screens and things. But when I have, uh, for the most part, when I'm using a lid for lungless salamander species, I use this acrylic. Um, I can't remember where I ordered it from anymore because I think it was a year or two ago and I ordered several sheets. I used a saw, a hand saw, and I cut uh, the sides there. That's where I put my, my corner Miss Kings. So I cut it to the size. That's the... Thickness and the color, it's a clear and it's um, it's a millimeter thickness of this. Um, again, this is going to be for my 40 gallon breeder. Um, I use these old, uh, well, old, but they're closet doorknobs. Um, and I use screws and I put them underneath, uh, um, you know, I put the screws underneath. I drill holes in the acrylic uh, with a drill and um, I put these on so you can lift it because these are really tight fitting. Remember, salamanders can get out, they're escape artists, so you've got to be really careful. Um, so anyways, um, that's, that's how I make the, uh, the, uh, the handles on it. Um, and again, this is, uh, this is 
right here is this screen mesh. So what I'm gonna do is, you'll see um, later, but um, when I'm done it, and I'll show you the finished product, but that actually will be um, siliconed to this, because I'm gonna drill holes for ventilation. Um, and then I'm in, it's an added layer of protection so they can't crawl through those holes. I am going to silicone this and cut it to size. Um, this is kind of the next step, the evolution in this is, you can see I drilled holes in this acrylic, I pulled the uh, stuff off. I also put the, um, um, the uh, little door, uh, the closet door handles on it. I'll flip it around here in a second so you can see, uh, again, that's where the Miss King will go and you, know, you have to cut that, you know. Um, but that's what it looks like, um, you know, enough ventilation. I, I do want it to be humid, so I don't wanna go overboard with the holes. Um, but anyhow, um, I will show you what this looks like here shortly. Um, as, as you can see, there's the, let me zoom in here for a second. I'll show you the, uh, the screws, you know, that's the, uh, the screws. And then this is going to be the, you know, the, the mesh stuff that I silicone over it. Uh, so you can see, but this is a kind of a, a, they can't get out of this unless there's some, a problem with the, uh, the acrylic cracks or breaks or something. So, um, this is kind of the way I do it. I cut with scissors all the way around. Um, and then again, I'm just going to silicone that, um, mesh there. Uh, so it looks nice and tidy and, uh, it'll look good. So anyhow, um, let me show you what the finished product looks like here after I do all those things. Well, this is the finished product. Uh, on the lid, um, as you can see, I kind of just put it here over the 40 gallon tank I'll be using. Um, you know, we've got the ventilation holes, I've got the, um, the doorknob handles, um, and you can see, uh, you know, I drilled a bunch of these, I showed you before, but um, you can see a little better now that the mesh is on. Uh, I did a little bit of a messy job with the silicone, but as you can see, I siliconed all the way around it. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, again, this is an extra layer of protection. It's unlikely that a salamander will crawl through one of those holes, but you never know. Um, so that's why I do it. So I'm just fitting it in here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, it's nice, tight fitting. Um, and this is a escape proof lid right here is where the, uh, Miss King's, uh, corner units will go. And then I will fill in any gaps on those units with, uh, expanding foam. So it is completely, um, tight. So anyways, um, a lot of people have asked, this is my go-to fail safe for lids. So I decided to not do a water feature, but I am going to definitely be utilizing a false bottom. So what I did was I am preparing the tank to drill for a, uh, a hole to drain. Um, I use some putty, some water, fill the hole with water, and then do some painter's tape. I'm using a one half inch diamond bit hole saw. Uh, those pieces right there, I'll talk about in a minute. That's the actual pieces I used to plug this and drain. Um, and uh, this is an important part of the process here. I, I like to do this at the beginning. So let's drill it. Uh, it took me about five minutes. Uh, once I was done drilling it, uh, I sanded it a little bit. I didn't show that part, but uh, really just wiping it down with rubbing alcohol and cleaning it, just making sure there's no glass dust or anything like weird stuff that you want to get in the tank. Um, so uh, I clean the, the outside of it and also the inside. Sometimes uh, it doesn't break perfectly, so there are little pieces of glass. So it's always a good idea to clean this out very thoroughly. Um, before um, going to the next step. Um, so those pieces I was talking about, um, this is a one quarter inch plastic thing I got from US Plastics. I ordered them online. Uh, that, that's what fills the, uh, the glass hole. Uh, this is just a um, uh, airline flow valve um, that um, fits quarter inch tubing, um, airline tubing that you would use for like an air stone or something like that. Uh, so I put the quarter inch tubing on right there. Uh, it makes it fit snug right in there. Full disclosure, I got this idea about a year and a half, two years ago from Tanner Serpa. It's an, uh, over at Serpa Design. Great way to drain false bottoms in Varium. I don't know if he came up with it or if he heard about it, but it is an amazing way. So I give him full props on this. Um, I will go ahead and put this in here. Um, it's nice and snug. I've never had one of these things leak, so don't worry about that. If it does, just get another one and plug it up. You buy like 20 or 30 of, the, 30 of these at a time because uh, they only sell them in bulk. Um, and then you just put this in there and then you are able to control the flow of water to drain out um, just by screwing the thing. Um, so, uh, you know, like to do this thing, you know, this, this stuff first um, before I do anything else. Um, and I will take this off because I'm going to have to use it, uh, flip the tank over to do the rest of the background. But, um, and, you know, as we kind of get into the background, I think it's important, I always talk about this, is to use this A-Crade light diffuser. Uh, I use um, some silicone, uh, some snippers, um, 
and uh, a measuring tape to figure out uh, how much of this A-Crate light diffuser hopefully have enough or I'll have to go buy more. I'm gonna do the sides and the back. Um, and just remember the foam that I use, the great stuff will always adhere to this better than just glass. It, it'll stick to glass, but I feel like over time it kind of peels off of the glass, but it really just seems to bond to this stuff. So um, that's why I use it. It gives a little more stability to your background, in my opinion, uh, in an experience. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done and we will be able to start in the background once this is all done, dried and cured. All right, so pretty easy job to silicone on the A-Crate light diffuser on the sides and the background. I've got a couple inches for the false bottom. I've decided for the false bottom. I'm not gonna create a A-Crate false bottom, but I'm going to use uh, like Hydro Balls or Leica instead with a screen mesh. I'm not gonna do that until the end. Um, so that's why I didn't go all the way down. So um, let's move on to the next step. Let me show you some of the elements Major for the hardscape. Major components of the hardscape are gonna be this driftwood that I've been letting sit out for about five months. Um, in you know, just kind of sterilizing it that way, You're gonna dust it off, clean it. Um, and uh, I'm gonna make like an eroded uh, tree trunk over a ravine type of look like I kind of showed you in those videos, hopefully with a lot of moss growing and things, maybe not too many ferns and plants, maybe one or two, but, um, and then I'm gonna be using this rock, it's, which is I believe is shale. This is also from my property up in the mountains. Um, and I have some smaller stuff in the little um, container there in the front, um, but I'm gonna be using a lot of this. I think this should be enough for the build. Um, again, I'm gonna have a lot of wood, so I may have to cut some of the pieces of wood with a saw, but um, that's, those are the major elements. And um, let's, you know, let's get to work with uh, figuring this out. I forgot to mention I'll be using great stuff, expanding phone to be securing the hardscape. Unfortunately, welcome to the supply chain crisis as uh, there is only one can here of pond and stone, which I prefer to use over the gaps and cracks. Uh, I cannot find it on Amazon or any hardware store. It's on back order, unfortunately. All right, so what you're looking at here is the 40 gallon laying on its back. I've cut uh, a lot of the driftwood with a handsaw because some of the pieces were just too big. I've got that nice tree stump right in the middle. Remember, I'm trying to make this look like an embankment and a root system kind of uh, eroding. Um, I'm gonna start working in rocks now, um, but so I've used all of the driftwood except some of the smaller pieces, which uh, look like roots also. I'm gonna use those later. Um, this is gonna be a really heavy enclosure, I think, so um, it's gonna be too difficult for me to try to stack the rocks um, when it's upright, I'm going to need to do it so I can secure them down. I'm just going to have to have somebody help me lift. Anyways, um, it's pretty good. I've had to use some super glue and some cocoa fiber to uh, cover in some of the spots with the gaps and cracks, which I can't stand. But um, anyways, I think it looks pretty good so far. So I'm going to start working in the rocks now and um, we'll, we'll you know, see how it goes. As I continue to build the background, what I've done here is I've still got the, uh, the tank laying on its back. I'm working the background. I'm doing some things out of order, including smearing the silicone all over the foam, uh, adding the cocoa fiber potting soil to get that in. Uh, it's just really a pain because I'm using the great stuff gaps and cracks, which is white versus the pond and stone, which is black. So everything shines through and you can see things uh, poking through. It's really annoying. I have to stop, readjust. Um, so it's really, really a struggle. It's taking a long time. I mean, I like the way it's turning out so far, but it's really slow going. Um, I highly advise you to, if you're gonna use this stuff, use pond and stone gaps and cracks. Is, unless you're gonna paint it, it it's just, a, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, so anyways, I'll continue to work this up and show you how it turns out. All right, so I finished the background for the most part. Um, the part where you can see the white A-crate, I'm gonna fill it with substrate. Uh, actually, this thing is super heavy. As you can see, I put it on a dolly. Uh, it's the only way I can move it around. I don't, I'm gonna have to get help to put it up on the uh, rack. But as you can see, I think it turned out nice. Um, added all the rock, the driftwood I had. Um, there's some spots that there's little gaps where I'm gonna need to put in some damp sphagnum moss to cover things up and also uh, act as a medium for maybe some vine growing plants. Um, but yeah, you know, um, it was a pain. It was, this one took about a week and a half. Um, just with the drying and, and the amount of rocks that I put in it quite a bit. Um, I had to carve the foam. I did get the Great Stuff Pond and Stone in the mail, thank God. Uh, it sped up the process. Um, it's easier to cover up. Um, and as you can see, I think it looks pretty good. A lot of, um, looks like roots and areas for salamanders to hide. Um, so really, really happy with it. Um, and uh, just have to go ahead and get it up there and you know i do have some more driftwood i'm going to add as well and i will show you that uh here shortly um when i'm done
All right, before I finalize the background, I want to talk about some of the plants going in. Might have a golden pothos, might have some oak leaf creeping fig. I haven't decided yet. Um, but what I am going to have quite a bit of is both moss and liverworts. I will name the mosses right now. So I'm going to have sheet moss, which is pretty basic. That's the stuff you can find growing on top of logs and stuff. It's really thick and rooty. I'm going to get star moss, uh, which you can see there, um, and also some sphagnum moss. They're, they're actually both in this bin right here. Um, some types of, uh, I guess, mood moss or like pincushion moss. Uh, that that are in these bins. Um, again, there's some more sphagnum moss. You can see how big that is. It's going to look pretty cool. I'm going to put that, maybe plant some of that towards the background um, if I can. Um, I've also got liverworts. Uh, you'll see them towards the end of this video. Uh, one is um, is um, snakeskin liverworts, which is uh, one of my favorites. I have it in my cave salamander enclosure. Uh, it's right there. And the next one that I show you um, at, towards the end of the video here is another type of leafy liverwort, but I just can't remember the name of it. But um, I get all this stuff from my property. I, I do uh, rinse some of the substrate away, but to be totally honest with you, um, and look for hitchhikers, obviously, but I don't like getting rid of all the substrate because I tend to find that the moss and liverworts don't do that well when you get rid of everything. I leave rocks, twigs, even some of the substrate in as a growing medium. I have much better um, um, luck that way with the moss outcome. So anyhow, um, I will get all this stuff in once I'm done the background and we'll take right, a look. I got the tank up to where it needs to be. Had some help with that. Um, I've got a Nikru grow light, which I use and are perfect for these 40 gallons. Uh, this tube right here, this is for the um, Miss King nozzles. Um, so I'll install that towards the end. Uh, and this is the background. Um, really happy with the hardscape, the way it came out. Um, I'm going to use clay balls and um, some uh, some mesh over top uh, for the substrate to go on top. That's where it's going to drain, the false bottom. Um, I'm going to fill in with some substrate over top, but really happy with the way this came out. Uh, really took a lot of time. Um, shoved some sphagnum moss in places where there was nooks and crannies and where you could see expanding foam. I'll still have to touch up a few areas, but um, overall, I'm really happy with it came out. This is very detailed. This is one of the better builds I've done. Um, I think it looks really good. Um, I had a lot of great inspiration to put this one together. And this is the hydrotin that I'll be using or the clay balls, um, in case you care. Uh, I will start to put that in and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Uh, then we can start with the substrate. One thing I forgot to mention is that I was uh, boiling some leaf litter to put in here. This is just some oak and some other leaves um, from my property in the mountains that I'll be using. So just sterilizing it and just forgot to mention. All right, moving right along, got the uh, hydrotin, which is like the expanding clay balls for the uh, drainage layer. And I put some um, window screen mesh uh, over top. Um, as you can see, uh, it was kind of a pain actually because of all the driftwood and it took about 20 minutes, believe it or not. But anyways, uh, moving along, um, next is we will be mixing up the substrate. All right, the first step in the substrate uh, for this was to smash up some wood lump charcoal, which I put into a big plastic bin, used a hammer, and then I sprinkled it evenly over the top of the window screen mesh, um, over the top of the, um, the hydrotin. Um, this helps with filtration and also helps with plant growth, and I, I have it pretty much in every single one of my setups. I also added the two corner units for the Miss King where the nozzles fit into on either side. Um, you know, you, I drill through the plastic and then I screw them in. I also added some great stuff, pond and stone into these corners here uh, to help escape proof this, um, which is something I definitely wanted to mention as, uh, so you don't get your salamanders out as you can see. All right, well, this is the substrate. Uh, this is coconut fiber, reptosoil. Um, reptosoil is actually some peat moss, soil, uh, carbon, and I forget the other component, but I use it a lot. Um, I also use organic potting soil when I can get it, um, which I actually did put some in here. Um, I also have smashed up sphagnum moss, dry, well, dried sphagnum moss. I twist it up and break it down a lot so it's not in big chunks. I also took some of these boiled leaves that I sterilized from my house in the mountains, and I smashed those up as well and shredded them and put them in. Uh, this is going to act as the main substrate layer uh, for this enclosure. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot of rocks and some other things, but let's start getting the substrate in. All right, got the substrate in, uh, sloped it up a little bit in the back. Um, it's about an inch, an inch and a half in the front. There's a little bit of a glare because these stupid lights, but um, overall, I think it looks pretty good. There's about three and a half to four inches in spots in the back. I sloped it up on the sides a little too. I'm not gonna really have too many plants in here other than moss and liverworts, some more like brophytes, nothing. Uh, maybe some button ferns, some small ones I collected from uh, my property, but that's about it. I'm not trying to get big plants in here. I really want to make it as natural as possible. So let's start planting. You know what? I lied. I'm not going to plant it yet. I had more hardscaping materials I wanted to use, so I did. I put some more branches, and I had a lot of these uh, these pebbles and 
rocks um, from uh, my property that I wanted to use where I got everything else here. Um, and I think it really looks awesome. I think it really is kind of the finishing touches on this in terms of the hardscape and the substrate. Um, I think we're in really good shape to start planning now, finally. Um, but yeah, let's start the planning. Let's go. Well, here is the finished product. As you can see, I added the Miss King up in the corner here uh, on both corners, actually. Um, installed both of them, uh, which is great. Um, it's all ready to go, tested, good, no leaks. And we should be good on that. That'll go off a couple times a day. Um, and you can see in here, um, I planted a lot of the moss and liverworts that I had. I actually found some button ferns that were growing out of the moss uh, on my property over the weekend. So I cleaned it and stuck them in in similar spots where I see them grow. That's what I try to do. Hopefully they will not fail and die. Um, that would suck. Um, but I think this looks really, really good. I'm probably, this could be my best. Uh, at least I feel like this is the best one I've ever done. It just feels good, looks very natural. Um, I added some uh, pine needles and some leaf litter, just broken pieces of it. I didn't want to add big leaves everywhere. It just wouldn't look right. I added a little bit of sphagnum moss, um, the star moss, uh, some sheet moss, um, and some pincushion moss. Uh, I think it looks really, really good. Um, this is going to be a really fun uh, tank to put animals in. And um, let me, I need to add some microfauna, so I'm gonna add some springtails now. And I will add, I'm not really sure what kind of isopods I'm gonna put in or maybe, um, so I have to figure that out. But um, I'm gonna add the springtails now. And then I'm gonna let it start to, you know, get cycled and get going. All right, so I put uh, my temperate springtails in from a turkey baster. I'm putting them in now for my master culture. These are my go-to for cleanup crew uh, and make this the good old buzzword bioactive. Um, but uh, they were great. They eat up mold and bacteria and keep things nice and fresh. Um, so uh, I'm not really sure what kind of isopods I'm gonna put in yet. Uh, maybe some native ones. I'm not sure. A lot of people have a lot of indigestion with that. I don't really care. I've never had a problem, but um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in yet. Um, but overall, this was a really fun build. Got a lot of inspiration from my um, mountain property that I have in the Appalachians um, and really think it turned out great. Going to try to put in some long-tailed salamanders. I, I will have a video when I do figure out the species and hopefully they are long-tailed and I will show you them um, being released into it. Um, but until then, I really appreciate all the support. Um, you know, if you haven't um, and you like this stuff, definitely subscribe, like, comment. Uh, love hearing from everybody and I really appreciate um, everyone taking the time to watch this and um, looking forward to another new build. Um, I think I'm going to do a tall vivarium or maybe a drip hall. We will see. But thanks again, and we'll talk to everyone soon on my next video.